You know, sometimes when you have a dream, you have to share that dream. Well, actually, more to the point, you have to share some of the resources that are required for that dream. In my situation, that's exactly what I've had to do. I've had no problem with it. Matter of fact, my wife's dream, once we moved to this location that we happen to live in now, was we discovered, well, not really discovered, but we knew it was there, of course, whenever we bought the house. But there was a secondary building that part of it had been finished out and part of it was shop. Well, my wife is a seamstress, knitter, yarner, yarny, whatever the hell you want to call her. She's very creative, and so the entire space was devoted to exactly what she wanted to do, and that was sewing, knitting, dealing with fabric, and whatever. So whenever I decided to get into podcasting, I needed a place that I could actually do what I wanted to do. And fortunately, she was very gracious and kind enough to offer to allow me into her space. And what you are about to see is probably about the third iteration of the changes that we've made. But this is how we are sharing the space that was originally hers, but now is ours combined. This happens to be her domain. Anyone that knows anything about sewing or knitting, and a lot of these terms are foreign to me other than, you know, what she has taught me, this is probably a paradise for them. There's a lot of stuff hidden behind these curtains, but you can see she has a lot of fabric, a lot more than what you can actually see. So like I said, originally this entire area was nothing but her sewing domain. But she decided to let me have a little piece of it. And this is where we wound up today. We walk back in here, and this is what is classified as a narrow media studios we have the guest area which happens to be two chairs that we do move around from time to time we do a show called the devil's lair which typically this chair is sitting over there and it's two gentlemen sitting in each one of these chairs and they have lapel mics and of course I have a camera on them. At one, at one point, I was doing a dual shot, uh, one on each one, I was rotating through. Uh, we've since actually gone to audio only, and that's what I've discovered. I mean, there are some people that like talking head shows, and they like just to watch the person who's actually talking, but uh, sometimes I just don't believe it's worth it. So anyway, so this is the studio. This, Right here is the equipment. This is my 24-inch iMac that I bought in, uh, I think, 2007. Uh, it's what I actually do the, the audio recording on, and I use NiceCast, which is actually software designed to stream to a Shoutcast server or a NiceCast server. But it's got a lot of cool features in it with plugins and what have you that uh, pretty much... I use it for the streaming and the recording of the, of the shows. Uh, it's It's been great. I love it. I think it's about 50 bucks now or something. You can see the mixer. This is a standard 1402 VLZ3 Mackie mixer. Uh, when I bought it, I think I paid about three three fifty something like that for it. Probably uh, Probably was overkill for what I actually needed at the time. But uh, I'm glad I have it now. 
And of course, there is a machine down here, which is actually I call the streamer, which when I was streaming live video, which I'm one of those guys that whenever I got into podcasting, first month I was doing audio, by the fourth month I was doing video, and uh, trial by fire, trust me, I learned a lot. And uh, anyway, that's the streamer PC, and you, these are the two monitors that are connected to it. And this is the South, so you do what you got to do to not spend money. This is a redneck monitor stand. What we did is we took a bucket, five gallon bucket, put some concrete in it, sunk a four by four in it, let it set. And then uh, I bought these inexpensive monitor mounts and put the monitors on the four by four. That way, I mean, now trust me, that damn thing's heavy, hard to move. I picked it up and brought it in here by myself. And uh, that was about a year ago. I'm not sure I have recovered since then. But uh, anyway, that's how I'm handling the monitors. I do have Wirecast. There's my chat, all of that. That is a PR40. I've had some questions about what is that red thing over the mic? Well, you remember, I said my wife knits. So she got creative one day, and this is what she calls a mic condom. Uh, you can see that I already have the metal pop filter. I, I figured what the hell. I went ahead and put that on there. I don't know if it actually uh, mitigates any of the, the popping peas, but as I actually had someone point out, hey, it probably prevents any dust getting into the microphone. And I'm like, well, you're probably right. Standard, uh, that's a, a, a Rode, R-O-D-E. -R I guess that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, I decided to go the inexpensive route. That was about $100 for that boom arm. I didn't feel like paying the extra 20 or 30 for the actual Heil. That, that's a Logitech C920 camera that's actually trained on me because I actually do some streaming from time to time out here for video gameplay. So anyway, that's pretty much it for the Anero Media Studios. It's two computers, the headphone amp right there that I handle up to four headphones. And uh, so that's it. 24 inch iMac, an i5 um, streamer, two monitors, a Mackie mixer, PR40, one C920 Logitech camera, and a headphone amp. So that's it for the tour. I, uh, I hope it was beneficial and you may have learned something or not. You know, we are down in the South and this is what we can do with what we have. And uh, I think it's innovative sometimes, but you know, it is what it is. So thanks for watching the video. Take care.